Hello everyone and thanks for watching Edupedia World videos. This is Sabiuddin Ahmed Siddiqui and now we will be continuing with the previous video where we left off that was association of the constructor. Now we are continuing with the Java GUI components with inheritance. Now we can continue with the today's lesson. We left over here uh, with the swing writing a program by association inside constructor. Yes, this was the lesson where we left off. Now continuing on to the new lesson is swing extending the frame by inheritance. So where you can create JFrame class. So there is no need to create the instance of the JFrame class explicitly. Now what is meant by explicitly that means where we used to just call a function and then the function will return the value for the object and then the object will be ready to just uh, give reference with the dot operator and then you see that every property or function or method or, or object you can refer through the object so now today's lesson is inheritance with extending the frame so you can see the program the first two lines are the same import java x and why i'm just showing you again and again to just make you perfect so that when you start working standalone you will be able to write it by your own that means you do not need to uh, look here and there for just copying the sentence and syntax and something like that so this is why first of all we have to understand the structure and then the keywords which are used to demonstrate the program in the programming environment so the first line says the same thing import java x dot swing dot asterisk semicolon and the second one is public class as inherit extends jframe now you can see the new word is extends jframe extends means it will inherit the properties of the jframe where you can see the comment line is saying that inheriting jframe that means the jframe is already uh, defined in the java gui components library and uh, in the first video you must have seen this thing so jframe jf now you can see i have written on the third line jframe jf I have given a reference here. Now I am just calling the constructor here as inherit. The same name of the class will be written with the parenthesis and the curly braces. That you can see the curly braces opens and then I have just written a message over there that is a command is known as the constructor starts here. Now after this you can see that J button is given over there as an object. The J button, JB is an object name and or uh, you can see the instance name equals to new J button where I have pass the parameters with the press button names that is press button event that means when you press on this button you will see that there must be some kind of message will generate now see the commands create button that means it will create the button when you press it and you will write the button event separately so this is just only to populate the frame with the controls they are known as controls as well we are just producing these controls with the help of this java coding and all the instances and and controls will appear accordingly where you will be setting uh, the coordinates as uh, you already aware of this thing that you are just setting the size layout set bounds and something like that and the appearance of, of the objects as well now jb dot set bounds you can see 130 100 140 that means 130 is x and 100 is y and 100 is width 40 is height line 7 goes empty jf dot add jb as you know that jf is the java frame frame reference j frame reference and dot is the operator which is calling the inner function of the jf which is known as add yes within the add you are just calling the jb which is the object name of the j button where jb will be placed onto the jf canvas or j frame now you can see the commands here that adding button on frame that means you have created something but if you want to just showcase your items on the frame so you just need the background the background is the j frame and the thing which will be placed on that background is known as controls so controls will be appearing in the way that for example you are placing buttons tag box dt pickers and uh, let's suppose labels uh, charts and something like that so there are lots of stuff to be placed on the j frame that will be used uh, gradually that will be taught gradually one by one to for each uh, controls we will be using for this course now jf dot set size jf dot set size means java frame set size you are setting the size again that means 400 is the y axis and 500 is x that means 400 will be the height and 500 will be the width that means if you see this way x y so x y so x will be 400 and y will be 
500 so that means the height will be 500 and the width will be 400 now jf dot set layout jf dot set layout you are already aware of this so again uh, the layout which uh, tells you about center right left bottom up so this will be uh, helping you out to just set the layout within the frames which should be appear in center left right top or bottom so we are setting this to null because this is a, these are the very basic first programs so gradually you will come to know about how to set the centers and the layouts as well now the line number 11 says jf dot set visible just this is very important line and very important function which is used to display the jf jf frame java frame jf, jf frame jf frame is displayed with the help of set visible true true is the boolean value where if you set it to false so the, so the form will not be displayed but the program will be running when if you want to make an instance that the frame should be displayed you will set this properties to true now on line number 12 you are seeing that the constructor ends here the comments are written constructor ends here this is the total class program with the constructor now you, you can see the constructor is over here at line number 12 now moving on to line number 13 where the again main method is written that is public static void main string square brackets args and again you can see the main class brackets opens here that is curly bracket starts and line number 14 you can see new s inherent new s inherent means the s inherent is already referenced and just you have put a keyword new and then s inherit function the s inherit appears as a function because it has two parentheses that means it shows that this is acting like a function and you have terminated it with the semicolon now you can see the function will work and then line number 15 the line the f function of s inherit will work because it is the constructor and you're just calling it in the main that is why it will start displaying the objects you have placed inside this constructor method now on line number 15 you are again ending and showing that the main class ends here and on line number 16 you are again telling that the s inherit class ends over here so in this way you can see that when we demonstrate on in the real environment that is uh, java environment so you will see that how these instructions will work so on each instruction you will see that yes the thing which is written it is okay and we have to understand it first and then we have to move on now i hope you will understand and we will continue in the next lesson so that lesson will be about uh, the understanding of java environment so we will be focusing on java environment and the objects so keep watching we will be continuing in the next video thanks for watching